the reality is, is that it becomes everyone's issue when there's potential for you to lose a whole community as a result of climate change. I've seen grown men crying, seeing their investments in property disappearing underwater. Hopefully something can be done. I worry about my nephews and the younger people and generation. I don't have to worry about trying to find good drinking water and trying to eat and survive. I mean, it's going to be tough. Lennox Island is uh, a snapshot of things to come. We lose Lennox, you know, we lose a lot. Lennox Island on the northwest coast of PEI. Population 452. It's a kind of canary in the coal mine when it comes to climate change. Rising sea levels, storm surges, and coastal erosion threaten its very existence. 300 football fields worth of land have already fallen into the sea. In Canada, it's one of the places where you can see the effects of climate change right now. That's why I've come. I wonder what the people here can teach us about how to prepare for a changing world. Gilbert Sark has skipped rocks from this beach since he was a little kid. Now he's the local community planner and he's focused on his island's uncertain future. Tell me about Lennox Island, what does it mean to you? Lennox Island, it's my home. This is uh, where I grew up, it means everything to me. What do you worry about? Look into the future of, of your island. Uh, honestly, uh, I worry about Lennox Island not being here. <laughs> um, I'd say in my sons and my daughters, maybe in my grandkids' generation, there'd be no Lennox Island, you know? It'd be eroded away if something's not done. I mean, can you beat the sea? No. You know, the water and the sea, rivers, whatever, it is, it's always going to find its way around. What's interesting is that in a time when some people still debate climate change, Gilbert tells me that on Lennox Island, they're all in. We're putting our voices out there, and hopefully, I'm not saying that someone's going to come by with a miracle idea that's going to solve all our problems, but maybe somebody will be actually working on that uh, miracle idea. Of course, before you can solve a problem, you have to know exactly what it is. And that's where this man comes in. Meet Adam Fennick, climatologist at the University of PEI. And whenever he comes to Lennox, he visits the sewage lagoon. During a time of storm surge, I've seen the water come up and lick the first of some of the cells of the sewage lagoon. And it's important that they make sure that this is well protected and away from the storm surges and the sea level rise that's inevitable. How precarious is this spot right here? Um, it's precarious and it's precarious right now. If the sewage lagoon is breached, it won't just pollute the bay. It could make the island uninhabitable. The obvious lesson is don't build so close to the shore, but Fenix says he's learned something more important. When I came to the island about five years ago, I thought I'd have to convince a lot of people about climate change. But people were coming up to me to tell me their stories about the changes that they were seeing, increasing temperatures, uh, drier conditions, and especially the coastal erosion. Everybody has a story in which they come back after a particularly bad winter and they'll find meters of their shoreline just completely disappeared. You see those lines there? Fennec's challenge was to turn those anecdotes into data. He did that, but nobody bothered to look at the studies. Well, one of my undergraduate students suggested that we create a video game. And sure enough, he uh, put together an example for me. And when I presented it to a public audience, I heard real gasps in the crowd. And I knew we were onto something. I mean, that's, uh, it's, just, it's, very, it's, it's very real. Fennec took the invention on the road. He plugged in the one meter sea level rise, predicted by the International Panel on Climate Change by the turn of the century. He added storm surges and showed people what their land could look like. It really touches people on not just the intellectual level, but on an emotional level as well that causes them to cry once in a while when they see something that they value and love being uh, impacted by rising sea levels. 
So that's the road you drive in on. When Fennec put the latest projections onto Lennox Island, the results were startling. We're going to raise up the sea levels up to one and a half meters. And you can see what some of that means as a permanent water level, that uh, certain homes disappear, and certainly the sewage lagoon uh, gets compromised. And these are realistic impacts. These are conservative impacts. They're not, um, you know, uh, ridiculously exaggerated impacts. Now, if we even add the factor of a storm surge on top of that, if we raise the water levels another one and a half to two meters, wow. you can see the significant uh, devastation or flooding that can occur to Lennox Island. It's, the island itself is not even recognizable. Wow. The place the people of Lennox Island decided to protect first was their graveyard. When I come to Mum's grave, it's, I don't know, I get emotional, you know. A lot of my family's in here, actually. Gilbert still remembers when the graveyard was in danger of disappearing. When I was younger, we used to make jokes that sooner or later, while we're swimming down at the wharf, we're going to be swimming with some of the caskets that are going to fall out because of the way it's eroding. <laughs> so yeah, it was, uh, it's a little scary. This is the repair job that they did to save this, this bank in here. Um, the community spent a lot of money to protect this spot, even though Gilbert admits it's likely only a temporary solution. Their burial site is safe for the time being. So uh, I'm, I'm extremely happy on that part. The graveyard on Lennox Island shows that fighting climate change isn't just about securing the future of a place, it's also about saving the past. That's an arrowhead. So that would have been found, you know, somewhere throughout um, the community, and this would have been used as the tip of a weapon. It's Jamie Thomas's job to make sure the island's cultural heritage doesn't just wash away. Well, what does it matter to preserve all these things? Like, this is really who we are, you know? I know that, uh, you know, a house doesn't determ determine who you are, or some type of monument doesn't determine who you are, but this has been home to our ancestors, you know, whether they lived in a wigwam or they lived in a, a tar paper shack or they live in one of the homes that we have here now, this is where our people come from. And so that loss of, you know, it would be devastation because you've lost where you come from. It's human nature. When there's uncertainty, we all reach for what we know, for where we come from, and it's the same here. And it's funny how a simple thing like baseball is one of the things on Lennox Island that shows what's been lost. Gilbert Sark tells me they used to play out there where those boats are now floating. You can see all that grass there behind the snow crab deck. That was thick one time. And now it's, it don't last as long now. Higher tides and she takes it out in big hunks now. I still remember coming down to Auntie Eyes when I was a kid, they were doing ceremonies over there. Yeah. We'd be playing all out in the front. Yeah, it's quite close now. Won't be long, we'll be moving those houses back. Yeah. There goes the neighborhood. <laughs> Are you taking your coffee, Gilbert? Uh, j just cream. As the community planner, Gilbert Sark keeps an eye on the houses that are closest to the sea. Well, it depends too. We get the storm surges. That takes a lot. Yeah. This afternoon, he visits Danny Tuplin. I don't know what the answer is. <laughs> so there's no decision on when they're going to start here to do anything. I mean, the surveyors have been out. I imagine you've seen them come along here. I have, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're talking about putting that thing in here, breakwater or some sort. I don't know. I'll have to fill in the bottom, raise the house, be the first lighthouse in Pietnonix Island. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, keep sending the space shuttle up, find another planet we can f up. <laughs> <laughs> Go get her. After coffee, Danny plays with Spartan along the edge of his property. Living as Danny does, just a stick toss away from the ocean. You could say he's in the front row for climate change. So why should people care, though? 
Like if I'm in Vancouver, I turn on the TV, I see this, why would I care about what's happening in Lennox Island? Well, it's going to come to you soon enough. <laughs> it's, it's not only here, it's globally. So yeah, open your eyes. It's coming to a station near you someday, sooner or later. What happens on Lennox Island doesn't just matter today. It's an example for when fighting the effects of climate change becomes the new normal. In 1999, an archaeologist came here and did a dig, and they did the carbon dating of the artifacts, which dated us here for over 10,000 years. What's it like to say that? It's a lot of pride in that. It makes you feel good knowing that you actually, <laughs> this is where my ancestors were, and this is where I'm at. Yeah. I'm not going anywhere. I'll be that stubborn old man that's beating people with a cane to, before they take me away. Nick Purden, CBC News, Lennox Island, PEI.